these two little adjustments in the masking tools didn't used to be there before mid-June of 2022. And this amount adjustment for your presets, that wasn't there either. When you launch Lightroom Classic 11.4, which just came out in the mid-June of 2022, uh, you're gonna see a screen with a pretty big list of improvements, bigger than we usually get for a mid-year update like we have right now. And if you've got questions about how to get the update, your Adobe Creative Cloud updater, uh, adobe.com, that's always the place to go for questions around that. But if you wanna learn what's new and how to use those new features, let's take a look here. The first one is something when these masking adjustments in Lightroom first came out in October of 2021, people immediately started saying, well, how can I use something like select sky and make an adjustment to the sky and then go and make a, either a preset or copy and synchronize these adjustments to another photo and have it use the mask? Because what would happen is if I tried to do that, it wouldn't use the AI mask. I had to go redo the mask. Okay, well, that's all changed now. So I did select sky. I made the sky a little bit darker. Maybe we'll make it a little bit warmer and I'll boom, bump up the saturation. Arguably, I'd probably use the graduated filter for something like this because it, I think it needs to be a better transition here. But this actually makes a really good example because when you look at the image here, if I do a white on black, you can see, let's go ahead and show our overlay. You can see it's just a big white area, which is the mask right now. That's that's what the mask consists of. All right, well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and let's copy our settings. So I'm gonna to go to settings, copy settings, and all I'm gonna do is copy the masking setting here. All right, so I copied those settings. I'm gonna to go to a new photo, which doesn't have any masks applied to it. And then I'll go to settings, paste settings, which by the way, these are two really good keyboard shortcuts to know because I, I use those features all the time. So I'll go to paste settings. I'm gonna paste it on and watch what happens. You actually get a little window there if you didn't see what it says that said it was updating the AI mask, but check it out. So now when I go over here, look at, the, it copied that mask. And if I click on it, you can see it made it darker, uh, boosted the temperature, boosted the saturation. So it moved my adjustments, but different from what it used to do, it actually moved the AI mask and recalibrated it, reconfigured the mask for the new photo. So that's something that hadn't been done up until now that I know people really wanted because now it really takes the power of those AI masks. And now you can sync those things across a whole bunch of photos at once and have them automatically update. So really good feature there. Another one uh, that people were looking for, and, and I did a whole video on this one because it was such, it was, it was, it was probably the most asked question when it came to these masks is inverting a mask. So here's here's what the problem that we had. I could go to select subject and let's turn off that overlay and I can make my subject a little bit brighter, make the shadows a little bit brighter. Okay, open up those as well. Now, my select subject, you can see here, didn't select this area down here. And let's say I wanted it to. Let's say there was part of the image that I wanted it to select with uh, whatever mask that I was used. And even it didn't even have to be select subject. Well, what I would have done is I would have went over here to the mask and I would have went to add. I could go to add with any tool. So I would have done brush and I would have went down here and I would have just painted and added to that mask. All right, so now I'm essentially adding to that one mask and you can see now underneath that mask, there's these little sub layers inside of there. Let me go turn my uh, back to just a co color overlay. So there's little sub layers back inside of there that make up the mask. Well, what I would often wanna do is invert this and then do something to the sky. But the problem was, is I couldn't invert this top layer mask, which is the entire mask. What I had to do is I had to go to these little sub layers inside of here and I would invert that. And then I would have to go to the brush layer and then I'd make a copy and then intersect it. It was just a pain in the neck, all right? You could mostly get to where you wanted to get to, but it wasn't easy to get there. And it was, again, not fun. Well, now we can go up here to the mask click on the little pop out menu. Not only do we have invert mask, which inverts the entire thing, that option wouldn't have been there for the old version. So now we could invert the mask, but even better than that, 
we've got duplicated invert, which actually saves me a couple of steps because this is what I do when it comes to the sky or the subject. I'm always, I would manually duplicate the mask and then have to go invert it. So it's actually saving you a step. I can duplicate and invert the mask, which now gives me the sky. And now I can make a separate adjustment for the sky. I don't have to have it be the same thing as what I did for the select subject layer. So that, that to me, that takes the masking tools, which I believe were 80% there. I mean, they were amazing tools when they got added. Um, and I think they were just lacking a couple of things. And the, the last two things that I just showed you to me takes them and makes it almost complete. Um, there's very, very little in, in the, the terms of what, what things I would want to add into here. Okay. Now the next one, I think people are going to love. This is something people have been asking for, for as long as I can remember presets being available. And before we get into that feature, a very quick 60 second word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it quick. Uh, if you haven't really dove into the masking options that were introduced in October of 2021 inside of Lightroom uh, Classic here or Camera Raw, I have a little mini course, very, very quick to watch, very, very affordable that will get you up to speed on it. I do think it is the biggest change that has ever hit Lightroom. And it's got a little bit of a learning curve. When you first look at it, they can seem complicated to use, but I think with this mini course, once you get past it, once you understand how they work, which is what I help you get through in this, uh, you will realize that there's so much you can do with these masks that you will very rarely now go over to Photoshop to do a specific selection because you'll be able to get that work done inside of Lightroom. So I'll make sure I put the link in the description if you're interested and swing by and check it out. Okay, back over to our tutorial. And I had previously mentioned when we when we left this that there's something new with presets and it's something that, that people have been asking for almost since the beginning of Lightroom when presets came out. And that is a way to adjust the amount of a preset if it looks too strong or not strong enough. So let me let me give you an example here. I'm going to go to my presets panel and I'm going to select one of the default Adobe. This is the portrait edgy one that comes with Adobe. So I'll choose this one here. And as I scroll down and I, if you go over to the right hand side, I look in the basic panel. So you can see it adjusted some settings inside of here, probably some settings in the other panels as well. Well, now we have an amount adjustment up here. So I can intensify it, I can amplify it, but I can also go the other way and bring it down. Some people call it opacity. It's not really like opacity, but I guess kind of, but it's a way for you to dial in the amount of a preset. And this is something people have wanted for a long time. I can say as somebody that sells presets that people ask for this quite often, because I know you watch a video on the website and it says, look at all these great things that presets do, and then they don't necessarily do it. And if you make it your own, they're not going to apply to this, the same photo or a different photo, the same as it was to another photo. And sometimes just adjusting the amount can be what you wanted rather than going over here and trying to adjust all of the sliders that it moves. But keep an eye on these basic adjustments over here, because I'm going to go to the amount adjustment and watch as I start to increase it, it's scaling those adjustments accordingly. All right. If I go to the left, it's dialing them back accordingly. Okay. Now, how does all this happen? The nuts and bolts of it, I have no idea. But what I can tell you is you first, when you create a preset, you have to go to create that preset and you have to turn something on. Let's just turn this all on here to support the amount slider. All right. That's the first thing is it's got to be a preset that was created to support that slider inside of there, or it may look gray. The other thing is, is that certain settings inside of here are not scalable. So if you ever see that, it either means the preset wasn't created to support that amount adjustment, or it means you're using things that are not scalable um, over here on the right hand side. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're starting to move. See, see what I just did there? So let's go click on this again, because it makes a good, good learning tool. I can move the exposure adjustment and I can still go over here and dial in the amount that I want, right? But look what I did. I moved the blacks adjustment and that preset amount slider, that went gray. Now I can no longer change the amount adjustment. So just understand that if you ever see it gray over there, there's a couple of reasons why that could happen and just be aware why. If you're gonna do amount, probably it's something you're gonna wanna do pretty close to when you first apply the preset inside of there. Now, that's not the only place that we have an amount adjustment. We also have one over here when it comes to our masking, 
Okay, so if I go over here, we had a, a, a mask previously started with, um, with this photo over here. And you can see all these settings that I adjusted. There's an amount adjustment here. Now, it's new and it's kind of not new because it used to be there. What you could do is you could collapse all of these adjustments. And when you collapsed all these adjustments, a mount would show up up at the top there, which allowed you to scale those adjustments. All right. And but the problem was, is it left it, it essentially closed everything and you, you didn't really get the best of both worlds. Well, now you actually get the best of both worlds with this. OK, so it's really not necessarily moving. You could see it's not moving the adjustments. It's just overall moving the amount of what my adjustments are doing here. All right. So again, I can go over there, click on that. So you again, it's new and not new. It was there in a way, but it's there better now. And it makes a little bit more sense, especially if you're doing any masking adjustments or also if you do any presets, which uh, I, I've had those as well and people always ask how can I control that this is a good way to control your adjustments for whatever masks that you're creating here all right there's a couple of little things here uh, let's go switch over to a different photo if I go to the crop tool keyboard shortcut is R uh, another thing we could do is change overlays and we've been able to do that for a while there's just a new one here I think it's the second one past the rule of thirds it's basically fifths okay so these the rest of them are pretty much the same Go back to rule of third. So again, just keep pressing the letter O for overlay to change any of those settings. These changes that I went over here were also added to Adobe Camera Raw if you use that. And I'm gonna include a link to Adobe's update in the description because uh, it goes over some small things that were added. I covered the big stuff here, plus camera updates and any lens uh, profile updates that were added in there. And finally, if you haven't seen my free video on the masking changes, that came out last fall in Lightroom Classic, that'd be a great place to go next because it is a big change and that's really a good crash course to get up to speed on what they added inside there and really take advantage of some of these masking tools.